Hey, I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to our piano myth busting video number 11. And today's myth is something you hear even from some very famous musicians. They'll say, you know, interviews, they'll say something like, well, I don't really read music and I don't want to learn how to read music because it's going to make me less creative. Well, there's a few things to this. First of all, it's absolutely not true that it'll make you less creative. The second thing, though, is that I know for a fact that at least for some of these very famous musicians, they do know how to read music. It, they, they're just playing this role of, you know, hey, man, you know, I, I don't know anything, but I'm just this creative genius. And uh, be that as it may, let them live their lives. And uh, I could argue that with some of them at least, maybe their uh, music as they... Uh, got older, wasn't as creative as it was when they were younger, and it would have been good to be able to learn some theory and some, uh, you know, read through some Mozart and get some ideas, you know, uh, whatever it is. Um, which brings us to you and me. First of all, ignorance, ignorance is not bliss. Take it from me, ignorance is not bliss. Being ignorant of something uh, is not going to make us necessarily, uh, in terms of music, is not going to make us a better musician. We want to learn, we want to be able to draw from a lot of, uh, a wide variety of things, and, and, and sometimes very quickly. So um, if you can learn, if you can read music, and I don't mean like, okay, open a book, I can, oh, what is that note? That's an A, okay, the third line up is a B, okay. I don't mean that kind of read music. I mean doing it so that it, it becomes fluent. You can sit down and you can moderately play something. You know, you look or you play a pop song and you say, oh, this is the bass line. You know, to become moderately fluent. We're not trying to sight read list on the piano or any Chopin or something. But being able to basically sit down and, and play some sheet music is what I'm talking about. It's not going to hurt you. Um, it didn't hurt Bach. It didn't hurt Mozart. It didn't hurt Charlie Parker. It didn't hurt Jimmy Page. Um, John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin, great arranger, you know, they're very, very creative. Sting, uh, when, I, when I mentioned uh, um, uh, just sight reading, the first thing I thought of was Sting. Sting is, is a very, very um, fluent reader. You know, there was an interview where he said, yeah, he used to, he used to play, play bass in like Broadway type orchestra pits and he could do it, still do it, right? These people know music. But here's the two um, aspects of this. Uh, when we learn theory, uh, and, and reading is, is part of that, I guess, just, just learning music, it's, um, we have to make sure two things. We have to make sure that we don't uh, neglect our ear. We don't want to only read and not listen. Sometimes that happens. So we want to listen to what we play as we're hearing it, as, as we're reading it, but we also want to keep developing our ear by um, uh, transcribing or figuring out chord progressions by ear or, or sight singing or even just really listening to what does it sound like going from the one to the four chord and back to the one chord. Oh, okay, I can hear that. Can I hear it in a different key? Oh, yeah. So we want to keep our ear sharp and keep developing our ear as we learn how to read music. The other one is that, particularly with theory, you don't want to let the theory interfere with your creativity. And that's what I think they're really afraid of, but, it, but the people I mentioned, you know, um, you know, Sting, Bach, Mozart, Charlie Parker, you know, Art Tatum, um, Bill Evans, uh, they, they don't let the theory interfere with it. So when you're, when you're being creative, when you're, when you're sitting down to improvise, you're not thinking so much, oh, do I have to do this, or do I have to do that, or when you're coming up with a chord progression, you, you let it sort of evolve and, and you listen to where it wants to go rather than saying, oh, I know that the two chord has to precede the five chord and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's part of it, but you don't want to be limited by that. So that's a big um, um, uh, um, something to think about. Um, but basically, no, you, 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 what we want is, is access to, okay, what did, you know, okay, what did, what, did, um, uh, what did Paul McCartney do on the bass? So you listen to some... Beatles bass lines and you know, say, oh, he went up, up a step from the root or whatever and then slid back down. And then you can also open a Beatles book or, you know, if it has some of the bass lines. Check out like 10 songs. You could do it like that, right? We, you know, we, we, want, we need information. We need musical information and we need a lot of it. And reading is um, a great tool for that. In addition to learning by ear and by intuition, it will not hurt your creativity. So there we go. Hopefully we cleared that up and 
Have fun and good luck with your music. We'll see you in the next piano myth-busting video.